Hi guys, uh, I'm gonna speak for a few minutes on uh, what I'm calling life and fulfillment, and it's gonna be a part one. I'm gonna do a part two. Um, living a fulfilled life, living a fulfilled life, a life of fulfillment. Uh, I'm gonna start by reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses nine and ten. He says, "Be cheerful and enjoy life while you are young." Do what you want and find pleasure in what you see, but don't forget that God will bring what well, God excuse me that God will judge you for everything you do. Verse ten: Rid yourself of all worry and pain, because the wonderful moments of youth quickly disappear. Um, now the point of emphasis here in verse nine, and he says, uh, "Do what you want and find pleasure in what you see, but don't forget that God will judge you for everything you do." Um, he's trying to bring wisdom to the youthful mind in saying that um, your most likely natural disposition as a young person is, is just to have fun and to move around and have all these, have a whole bunch of friends and vacation and do all these different things and see sites and travel the world, so on and so forth, wonderful. Um, and he's trying to bring wisdom to that young perspective uh, because oftentimes when somebody has much of a resource, they tend to waste it. When a young person thinks they have much time, they, they tend to waste time. So when you have much food, you, you, you're you more likely to waste food. If someone told you that's the last food left in the world, you would use it differently, right? When the teacher tells you the test is three weeks away, you can kind of be like days ago until maybe the last week or something. But if the text is next, the text is say right now it's 3 p.m. and the, text, the test is tomorrow at five in the morning, I'm not gonna joke around with my time because I don't have little time left. So the more scarce or resource it usually, the more effectively the, 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 the person stewarding that resource will use it. And the perspective here is that young people such as myself will tend to trivialize time because we think because we're young, we have much of it. And so we waste time doing a bunch of things. And meanwhile, in the midst of all the activities that people are doing, even statistically speaking, you'll find out that most young people are unfulfilled and unsatisfied with life. The pressures of trying to figure out what to do with their life and all these different things, you'll find out that all these activities are really just psychological coping mechanisms, uh, whether cognizant of it or not. They're just trying to do stuff to not be able to face real life. So we go clubbing, we go partying, we just want to get out and do stuff. You know, we don't want to be in the house and actually have to face actual life that that's one of the most scary things for young people to do is to face life because it's like ah you know you just came from being young and now you're facing life i'm not just talking about having a job i'm talking about that's not life anybody you can be 15 and have a job i'm talking about facing life as in why are you in the earth the big questions of life the purpose of life the purpose of your life facing the deep things concerning this life um and being able to find uh, fulfillment in it, uh, it's very rare to find a young person who can sit down and focus on one thing, right? Like I said before, we're bouncing around, doing a whole different stuff, going here, going here with this friend, that friend, da 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 da, this relationship, that relationship. It's always bouncing around, right? It's very rare to find a young person that can sit down and be able to not just because they're necessarily an introvert. That that's not really that may help, but that's not really the the the, the essence. The essence is that. They have deliberately made a decision to sit down and focus on one thing. That's very rare. Very, 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 very rare. Those people usually become outstanding people in society, whether in the kingdom or in the secular world. They usually become outstanding people because they were willing to uh, sacrifice their young years to devote themselves to something that most people wouldn't make a decision to until later on in their life. Like Mozart, who started playing piano at like three years old. And he's, and he's training like he's already... A professional pianist at six, you know, right, where most six-year-olds are just running around making noise, right? And that's why he becomes who he becomes. Uh, but he found something that he felt fulfilled him. He didn't feel like, most times people think these people are weird, but they don't understand. They don't feel like they need to have 55 friends. They are they like what they're doing, right? It, it, they, they found something that fulfills them young. Mozart found a piano. Serena and Venus Williams found a tennis racket. Kobe Bryant found a basketball. At the age of 12, Kobe Bryant said that once he was 12, he discovered that this is it. This is all I want to do. 
and everything in my life is going to help me to improve and become a better basketball player. So he said at that point, the world became a library to him. Everything he read, watched, studied, every, every person he talked to, it was all to help him to become a better basketball player. So if he watches something, it's to help him become a better basketball player. If he has a conversation with you, basketball, if you read something, it's gonna help him become a better basketball player. Because he already found, he, to him, this is not this for him personally he felt like this is why i'm on the earth there's no need to waste time this is it let's just let's just let's just make everything simple and center my life around this one particular goal that is rare he's 12 most 12 year olds what just i want to be a fireman i want to then you grow up 13 14 now you're in middle school high school you're just trying a bunch of different stuff here now i'm gonna get into this and get into that and wanting to do all these different things um and again it's rare for a young person to be able to sit down and focus on one thing um, you know, so you see the, the Serena Williams, well, you see the, the young athletes and, and different people who are able to go against that status quo and find something that satisfies them young and they eventually become exceptional people in the fields of endeavor. Uh, I define fulfillment as the satisfaction derived from a conviction that one is walking in their assignment. That's fulfillment. Uh, when you're not able to find, again, when you're not able to find that fulfillment young, you'll not have a, a, a sense of focus. You'll, you'll just be doing what the typical, what adults expect for typical young people to do is just be doing stuff, doing activities, just doing foolish things, hanging out with the wrong people, just trying different stuff, trying drugs, trying sex, just trying to try stuff. Like the, the inability to sit down, like you can't sit down and have one direction of life. There's always some kind of randomized act, randomized assortments of actions, just trying to explore different things. It's a very, it's a very immature uh, and irresponsible mindset that is not just because you're young and success, it's not acceptable. It's not, it's not a safe mindset. It's not a very sound mindset. Um, the wisest thing you can do as a young person is number one, of course, to latch yourself to God. And then number two, to latch yourself to your assignment. It brings coordination, it brings focus. He said uh, in Titus, in the book of Titus, he says, charge the young men that they be sober-minded. That means to be sensible. God's charge to young people was that we be sensible, sober. It means that we are able to think soundly, make sound decisions, make have sound associations, uh, use our time soundly, be sensible. Because the problem is that when you're young, because emotions and desires are coming, you have a tendency to just make decisions based on feelings. As he said, most times a young person will just want to make decisions based on how they feel and it's fun, pleasure, fun, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, but what will happen is that as you mature, physically speaking, you'll find out that most of your young years will only bring you regret. And you'll be, you would have done many activities, you have many things you checked off in your bucket list, but you're still unfulfilled in life because you never developed or devoted time to actually finding uh, what is actually going to satisfy you in your life. You never found your bread. John chapter 4 verses... Uh, 34, I believe he's, Jesus was speaking. He said, my bread is to do the will of him that sent me. The bread is trying to explain uh, because when you eat food, it satisfies you. He says, what satisfies me is to know that I'm doing the Father's will. That is something that is a very powerful statement. Not every human being can say that. Even Christians, especially Christians, can't actually be able to say that. They haven't actually found the thing that satisfies them. It can't be simply natural things like raising children and uh, these things. Listen, animals raise children. Animals have families. Animals work to provide food for the household. That's a natural life. What's the difference between human beings and animals is not that we talk because they also communicate. They may not communicate as intelligently as we communicate, but they communicate. The difference is purpose. We're here for a reason. Animals, there's, there are many of them. They're just around doing stuff. Maybe, you know, of course they provide some kind of value to the earth, but in terms of, they don't have a divine purpose. You see, they live life based on instincts. What do they do? They start young, they grow up, they get married. Well, they find a spouse, have children, raise children, provide food for the household and die. But that's what a lot of people are living. They just grow up, Anyway, get married, have a job, provide food for the household, and die, as if we're animals. Not, that, that's an, that to me personally, respectfully speaking, that's an animalistic lifestyle. There is no divine assignment. There's no God has sent me to do A, B, C, and D. It's just living to live. 
living to make money to give it back just living to get money to pay bills and get money and pay bills and take care of your kids they grow up they leave now you're with your wife i don't even know this woman i just been raising kids with her now we're just stuck here we save up money for our retirement fund and then we just die that's not life that's what i mean by unfulfillment how can how can how can somebody be satisfied with that's an animalistic there's no difference between that kind of life and an animal it's the same thing they also grow up you grow up they raise children animals raise children animals find a spouse animals provide food for the household and they eventually die that's a basic natural life there's nothing different than that of a, a an animal's life the difference is supposed to be divine purpose you see divine purpose that god didn't send an animal with a divine assignment but he sent a man you see, he sent a man and packaged him with a divine assignment. And that divine assignment is supposed to be your source of fulfillment. It's supposed to what is what's supposed to let you know that you're actually living a life of meaning. It, it's very important, not even just spiritually, but psychologically speaking. Is it's actually it actually has health benefits for somebody to live a life and they have a peace knowing that I'm doing what God has called me to do. It's very important. That's why he said it's my bread. It's what satisfies me. It's what fills me. It's what makes me feel like, yes, sir, I'm doing what I was created to do is very, very important, very important. So I have many young people, even statistically speaking, many young people are suffering with depression, anxiety, high BP at 21, huh? Because the, 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 all the different things we're busying ourselves with social media. So all these different distractions are just, it's just unnecessary fluff. It's just really unnecessary. Life is, life is really simple. I'm going to do a teaching soon on the simplicity of life. Life is not supposed to be that complicated. What I mean by that is that the, the, the main assignment, the essence of life is not supposed to be that complicated. I'm going to show you a scripture in Ecclesiastes. It, it, the whole duty of man is simple. It's not supposed to be where every day is just all these just people just have unnecessary troubles, breakups and this and that. Who told you to, I mean, it's just, you know, <sighs> anyways, um, <sighs> fulfillment is very important. Um, to be able to live a life and know that you're walking in the will of God, not just generally speaking, like personally, I'm doing, I, you, you have a conviction that I'm doing what God created me to do. Uh, that's where you'll excel. That's where you'll shine. Um, he says, you're the light of the world and no city on a hell can, no, no city on a hell, no city set on a hell can be hid. And so he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Um, very important to live a real life, uh, especially to be able to find that fulfillment at a young age. Uh, it's not luck. It's it's something that, that can be done. Uh, the first assignment, if you want to be able to find fulfillment, be able to find uh, your bread in this life, uh, you would have to first, of course, discover God because that that kind, that programming, that the reason why a man finds fulfillment when they're walking in their assignment is because it's almost like God programmed that in the human consciousness that, that when, as soon as you find it, it's something turns on when you know that this is it, this is it. There's no confusion. It's not just a feeling. There's something divine about it. Something holy about that thing. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just waking up and say, I feel like doing this. I want to be, it's not about, I want to be the, your assignment is something you discover in God. You cannot go outside of God to discover your assignment. The Bible says in Jeremiah 10, Jeremiah, Jer some chapter on Jeremiah says, I know the way of a man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh to direct his own steps. What does that mean? The course of your life, the assignment that would bring fulfillment to your soul, you won't find it in yourself. That's why there are billionaires who kill themselves. That's why there are millionaires with Grammys and all these awards and they're still not satisfied. It's not just accomplishments. It is something that is trapped in God that you must find. It's not, you, as I'm saying, you probably think I'm just meaning that just trying to, just finding something meaningful to do and doing it. That still won't satisfy you. There are actors who have had all kinds of Oscars and awards and, uh, you know, everything that you would think is uh, a fulfilled life and they still kill themselves. They still... It, 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 so what's, it's not that simple. It's not just trying to find something that makes sense to you, even if it's a good cause. No, it is something that was already defined. Let me put it this way. The, the, the thing in life that would fulfill you was already determined before you were born. If you don't find it, no matter what else you do, you will never be fulfilled. That is the key to fulfillment. It is to find your assignment. That is the bread that you will live on. That is what will satisfy you. That's what wakes you up in the morning and puts you to sleep at night. Knowing that tomorrow there's a new, like, 
I can't, I don't know what life can be without that thing. What do you do every day? What do you, what are you thinking? Like, what is your mind? What are you working towards in life? Everyone's going to die. So what at, what, when your time is expiring, what is supposed to be done by the time the clock hits zero, clock hits 12, what's supposed to be done? It's just I, why I live my life. Live your life to do what? I vacation here. That's all wonderful. But what did your life produce? You see, all these things, different things are important. But I'm going to end here. Again, the only way to discover your your bread. Um, um, in fact, there's a scripture that says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God gives the bread to the eater. He gives the satisfaction to the eater. And so Jesus himself is called the bread of life. He is he is not doesn't have the bread. He is the bread of life because your workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So that fulfillment is actually in Christ and you, your assignment is hid inside the office of the Christ. And so as you begin to press into him and begin to seek him, you'll begin to unravel your own assignment and you'll find out that inside that assignment is a dimension of Christ that must be expressed through your fulfilling your assignment, which will give you satisfaction that you are doing the will of the Father. And so if you wanna receive Christ, say these words with me, Father, I thank you for sending my bread down to me. I receive him and I receive his life in Jesus' name. Amen.